Okie dokie. Don't say bag so damn much, Matt. Don't say bag. Thumbnail. Today I'm going to be reviewing the GORUCK GR2 in the Woodland Waxed Canvas. This is the Heritage model, 34 liter backpack, and I just got back from 10 days travel in California at Disneyland where I had this bag packed up for a whole lot of fun. So stick with me, I'm gonna get into the review. I'm gonna tell you what I love about this bag and one very big caveat right at the end. So stick around and I'll let you know what's not so great. My name is Matt and I'm in search of the best travel bags. I'm gonna spend the next year checking out all the top travel bags on the market and trying to find the very best. Now, if my voice sounds a little croaky, I'm just recovering from a cold, but this, uh, Apple juice is supposed to help, I've heard. Cheers. Now, I've been interested in the GORUCK GR2 for a long time, but I finally took the leap and picked up this bag when it came out and waxed a woodland canvas this uh, fall. I've had the GR1 for almost a decade, and you can check out my long-term review of that earlier on in my channel. Now, don't get me wrong, I am not a GORUCK apologist for their pricing. It is almost out of control, but they are made in the USA bags. They come with a lifetime warranty. So GORUCK means a few different things to me and it's kind of intangible. I think that's probably exactly what they're going for with their branding. But to me, they mean first and foremost, durability. You know, I have had my GR1 on a number of rucks and uh, you know, you can crawl through the mud with it, hose it off and it's ready to go. Next, simplicity. Uh, they do away with a lot of the extra features that you would see on a lot of other backpacks and travel bags out there. That's both good and bad. I do love simplicity. I love the clean design and I love the internal or lack of internal organization in this bag. Uh, but at the same time, uh, yeah, if you're looking for specific features, specific pockets, specific attachments, then look elsewhere. And lastly, with GORUCK, there is definitely a heirloom quality to the bags. This is something I could see my son or grandson digging out of the back of the closet someday and going, uh, oh yeah, this is dad's old, you know, travel backpack. And there's some memories and, uh, you know, character that gets imbued along with using a product for a long time and just having it with you on these special adventures. Now this all might just be marketing nonsense, but it did get me in the door to try out the GORUCK GR2. And I'll tell you what, I had a really great travel with the backpack. First, let's get some of the specs out of the way. The GR2 is a 34 liter bag and it weighs in at a very hefty 5.3 pounds. Uh, now that is very heavy for a travel bag. And if you're traveling internationally with uh, some of the smaller carriers, uh, then you might actually be bumping into your weight limit. <clears throat> Now, even though the GORUCK does weigh quite a bit, its weight is very nicely distributed throughout the bag. And I find that uh, even with its extreme weight, you don't feel it as much on this bag as you do on some of the others that I've carried, say like the Matador, where a lot of the weight is distributed along the back panel and actually feels quite heavy when you pick it up. All right, so let's start with the exterior. This is made out of a wax canvas in the Heritage model different than the Cordura that the uh, standard GORUCK bags are made out of. Now, it's not a super waxy feel. It's kind of a dry wax, um, and it's got a very nice smell to it. I don't know what exactly that smell is, but uh, I, I really like the way this bag smells. I think it's gonna break in very nicely. It is a, it's a nice weight. It's not too stiff. It's not, doesn't feel like it's going to wear through. I think that GORUCK really nailed the fabric. Now for the camel pattern, this is gonna be like uh, debatable for some people, but I really think the M81 Woodland is a very cool uh, look. And some ways it looks a lot less tactical than the GR1 with its molly webbing on the front um, and just the black look to it. So this to me doesn't scream military, um, but still has some like kind of cool streetwear vibe to it. You've got your standard GORUCK, uh, rectangle of Velcro here for your morale patch. And this one does come with a full leather patch on the front. On the top of this bag, you've got a leather accented handle. Apparently all the leather for this is made from Red Wing in the United States as well. And uh, standard, really nice, uh, thick grab handle on the top of the bag. On the back, 
you've got those signature GORUCK straps, just really beefy, really cushioned and padded. Um, one of the most comfortable bags to carry that I've come across so far. An upgrade in all of the new bags is this new 210D nylon uh, along the back panel and the straps to reduce the wear that you're putting onto your shirts uh, from carry. And it is a nice upgrade from the standard that I had on my old GORUCK. So I would say I really like that feature on this. Now the back panel on GORUCKs is nothing to write home about. Uh, you've got some basic channeling here, but if you're carrying this in a hot, humid environment, your back's gonna get sweaty pretty quick. As you can see with all the Heritage models, there's no sternum strap, there's no waist belt. Simplicity at its finest, but also complete lack of customization if you do wanna add that. I think you can send it into scars and have that sewn in, but I'm not 100% sure on how that works with the Heritage models, to be honest. As far as other leather accents on the GR2 model, you've got a strip of leather here, and I don't know if that's structural or just for like show. And then you've also got the whole bottom panel of this bag made in that black Red Wing leather. So I imagine that's gonna patina nicely and hopefully stands up really well over time. Okay, so talking pockets. Goruck pockets, uh, pretty similar to what you see in the GR1 and in all the GR2 models, it's laid out basically like this. But essentially, you've got a couple access pockets from the outside. You've got this front slash pocket here that is very shallow as far as depth and really doesn't have its own capacity. So like, this is like, I don't know, envelopes for your grandma. Um, I put my Kindle in here and that's about all that you can fit in here. I've always kind of hated this pocket because once the bag's packed, it can be really tough to get in and out of there. Uh, but I guess it's just one other quick access point. The one thing I was really excited about with the Heritage bags and this one is that you've got this quick access pocket just behind the grab handle. And that one is big enough for your sunglass case, your AirPods, um, maybe a pen and a notebook. So just a really nice way to get into the bag quick and easy. Um, my GR1 didn't have that and I really like that feature in the new GORUX. The laptop compartment is always a little bit, you know, funny to get into on a GORUX. You just have to twist back that shoulder strap and then you can unzip and get into that nice padded laptop compartment. It is very sturdy. It is raised off the bottom of the bag. There's a very stiff frame sheet in there. So lots of protection for your computer and device in there. Um, uh, GORUX website says that it can fit up to a 17 inch. I haven't tested out anything quite that big, but my 12.9 uh, inch iPad Pro fits in here. My big work computer fits in here, no problem. And uh, so I imagine it'll fit, you know, a 16 inch MacBook. Zippers on the exterior of the bag are all YKK zips. I think they all flow really nicely. I like the zipper pulls. And uh, unlike some of the other bags out there that I've tested, I I've never had an issue with the GORUX zipper pulls, um, you know, having any problem whatsoever. All right, now let's talk about the inside. So the difference between the GR2 and the GR1 is that the GR2 is basically a GR1, like the 26 liter that I have, with an extra pocket, an extra compartment sewn on top of the bag. So you actually have, first off, this outer compartment that opens right up, fully clamshell. So when you lay this down, you can pack that compartment up, close it up, and then pack the next one. Looking in here, you've got kind of a standard uh, pocket organization if you've looked at any of the other GORUCK bags. But up top here, you've got this really nice GR1 leather patch. Um, this guy is made in the USA. I think all of the GR series still are. And then you've got a small pocket out here, small pouch. Um, you've got a side zip pouch here with this mesh webbing that you can see through. And then you've got a very similar mirrored pocket down here as well with that mesh and that flat kind of feel to it. There's no dimension really to these pockets. So you could stick maybe like some rolled up underwear or socks into these pockets, but there's not really any dimension into these. So they're more for small organization. Um, you know, you can put cables, uh, different stuff in here. I don't tend to use these. I haven't really found a good use for all of the different pockets. So even though there's not a ton of like 
pen slots and organization, I still don't necessarily use all of the pouches that are provided. On the inside of this pocket, the one last thing to talk about is you've got this sewn in pouch. It's kind of like a sewn in field pocket here. And this guy does have depth and dimension to it. So if you open that up, it doesn't quite open up completely, but if you can see inside here, you've got two kind of mesh slots. So like a passport sized one, and then a smaller one here on this side, like an AirPod size. And I actually ended up using this as my tech compartment in this bag. So I had, you know, cables and chargers and stuff like that, and just zipped it in and kept it in here. You could use that as your built-in dop kit as well. One downside is this isn't removable. I think that might be a cool feature is if this was a Molly pocket that you could actually take out and take with you. But uh, I don't know, they didn't decide to do that. And I don't, to my knowledge, think that any of the GR2s, I think they're all attached like that. So that is the external pocket for my use. Like I said, I had my tech kit stuff in here. And then in here I put a spare pair of shoes. So I actually brought uh, some sandals on my trip, obviously to California. You need something uh, for warm weather. And then I had my dock kit here. So that all fit in here, no problem. Um, and then I think I had like some extra little stuff like a sleep mask and stuff like that. Let's talk about the main compartment now. Very similar to the layout of that outside pocket. But you have a much deeper opening now for stuff. So you do have on this reverse side, uh, some more of those no dimension mesh pockets, right? So you've got a top. For my use, what I did is I filled up the bucket of the bottom here and just ended up putting in my standard packing cubes. I had my medium Eagle Creek and then a, two smalls, one with uh, kind of my underwear and one with my shorts. Check out my previous video that I posted where I packed this up compared to the Matador 45 just behind me. And you can see how I had this guy packed up with the packing cubes. It fits that all really nicely. And Gorok does make a 40 liter of the GR2 as well. So um, just bigger in every kind of height and width dimension to, to squeak out that extra six liters. I'm gonna go over some of the things I don't love about this bag. First off, this slash pocket at the front is uh, kind of useless, you know. There are no bottle pockets or Molly attachments on the GR2 Heritage Editions. So if you do want to attach anything externally, good luck. Also, uh, I personally find this bag fits really well and is very comfortable for me at my 5'11 frame. I think if you are any shorter than me, you're gonna find that this starts hitting into your bum below your, uh, your tailbone essentially, and that might lead to some discomfort. I think it's a, your mileage may vary. I do find it, it carries high. It doesn't have load lifters. It doesn't have a sternum strap. It doesn't have a waist belt. So, uh, you know, if you're a smaller frame person and you're carrying a lot of weight on your back, this one might be uncomfortable, especially over a long amount of time. Talking about the weight, the weight of this bag is absolutely absurd. I know. Now I think I am going to make a lot of use of this bag, car camping, uh, road tripping, that sort of thing, where maybe I don't necessarily need the weight savings, but I'd really like to have the extra durability that this offers. Gorok did just come out with a new uh, Dyneema GR2 that is a, a lightweight sailcloth. It's a full 2.3 pounds lighter than this bag. It comes in at three pounds. Now that gets me to the last thing. That Dyneema bag is absurdly priced and this one isn't much cheaper. So to be honest, getting to my verdict, is this bag worth it? Now, I think there's something to be said about Goruck bags. I think they've been making these uh, in the similar design for a long time now, and they figured out a really excellent form factor. Is there better values on the market? I think absolutely yes. I also think there is something special about the Goruck uh, and the GR2, and it is probably one of my favorite bags that I've traveled with recently. Now, getting to the last part here, the caveat with this one. If you can see, this zipper has started to separate from the main body of the backpack. And that was there just a little hole uh, when I started my trip and now it has come, come apart even more. I think essentially uh, they missed sewing that zipper into the lining. That is super disappointing on a brand new bag, but I have already contacted Goruck. I've talked to their scars department um, they do have a defect guarantee, so they're gonna pay for shipping back to them. 
Uh, I'm gonna get this bag repaired. They're gonna send it back. I will check in. I'll let you know how uh, the whole repair process goes with GORUCK. I've never tried that before, but that'll be a good test to see how they actually you know, hold up and uh, make good on their guarantee of a lifetime warranty. So I am interested to see how that repair goes and I will check back with you and let you know. In conclusion, the GR2, absolutely incredible. I think this is something that will last a long, long time. I think it weighs an absolute ton and it costs an insane amount. So uh, just be forewarned that you're buying into something if you're gonna get into you know, a GORUCK bag. All right, that's all I've got on the GORUCK GR2. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. Uh, your time is super valuable, so thanks for spending some of it with me, and I hope to see you here for the next one.